Guys, Nick the Nutter Buster. Today we're gonna come and talk to you about something I think is fairly important. Um, talk about carabiners uh, for saddle hunting. Um, carabiners are just a, a cool little piece of gear. You can see this is just kind of a standard run-of-the-mill black diamond positron, uh, 25 kilonewton main axis rating, 8 kilonewton side axis rating. Um, you know, open gate rating of 8 kilonewtons. So we're going to kind of talk about those numbers, what they mean, and then we're going to talk about some other different stuff uh, with carabiners. So those numbers that you can maybe see on the side right through here, um, all good climbing carabiners from reputable com companies, um, you know, like Gribble or Black Diamond or uh, Petzl or whoever you're getting your carabiners from. They're going to have those three numbers. So what do they mean? So the 25 kilonewton rating on this is when you exhibit a pull in line with the long ways of the carabiner. All right, so that's when a rope or a piece of webbing is right here, right here. That's where a carabiner is designed for its maximum strength. All right, and you're looking for something um, in the 20s plus. And most of them are. Most carabiners are going to have that. If you... Or buying a carabiner at a hardware score or something like that is probably going to say not full climbing on it or it's going to be rated in pounds if you see something that's rated in pounds run the other way you want it rated in kilonewtons uh 21 kilonewtons is heat bottom newtons um and they're measuring not actually a static load but they're measuring the amount of force that you can generate in a fall so that's what you're looking for um the eight kilonewton rating on this that side to side load that's the weak part of the carabiner, basically. You never want to load a carabiner that way. You never want to load it across the minor axis. Uh, you never want to uh, corner load it, you know, have it bending over something like that. They're not made to bend. Um, never want to side load them, never want to cross load them. So you wouldn't want to have, you know, a rope here and then a rope here and then a rope here. You know, that's kind of stuff that, that breaks a carabiner. Basically, your carabiner is very, there's lots of ways that you can do it wrong. It's easier just to remember the way that you load the carabiner properly, which is straight in line with it long ways. And then, like you can see right now, the gate is not locked. That's going to be the, the third thing. You always want to lock the gate because when it's not locked, it drastically reduces the strength of the carabiner. So this is just a basic screw lock. Squeeze check them. Every time you, you put a carabiner on, squeeze check it. Make sure that it's not going nowhere. So you don't want to leave it open like that. Um, I don't have a, a wire gate carabiner with me today, a standard wire gate carabiner, because really if you're climbing trees and using it, you know, to, to keep you safe when you're 20 foot up in the air, wire gate carabiners are out of the question. You want a locking carabiner. So we're talking about the different types of locker. This is a screw lock. These are very common. They're very inexpensive. Um, I believe this is a key nose carabiner. I think all but one of these are. So key nose just means that it doesn't have a little hook on the back side right there. It's got these side detentions, and that's handy, especially if you're using something like webbing, because sometimes that can snag. Um, so it's basically, when you see kinos, it's basically just a like a snag-free carabiner. Um, the only thing is, you can see it takes some time fiddling with it to open it up, and then you got to wind it back shut. They can kind of squeak. Not a big deal if you're climbing a mountain, but in the deer woods, you don't really want that. So that brings us to our next carabiner, which is a... Uh, Petzl SMD, I believe. We'll put links to all of these. Um, this one, slightly weaker. It's got 23 kilonewtons. Still right there where you want to be. Um, 8 kilonewton, side-to-side -side rating, 7 kilonewtons, open gate rating. But the neat thing about this is you can see, so it's locked. Squeeze check it. It's not going nowhere. But you just twist, pull. Okay? It's an auto locker. That's, a, that's probably the cheapest type of auto locker you're going to get is just a twist lock. Some of them are, you have to twist and then pull down and then pull. Um, those are technically safer, like a three, I think they call it like a three function versus a two function carabiner. Um, that's still in my book. For me personally, read up on it, make your own decisions, visit some arborist forums, read some rock climbing websites. Um, that feels, feels safe to me. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, this is the lightest one I've been able to find. Um, you can see it's pretty much the same size as a black diamond positron, which that's kind of like the gold standard in saddle hunting. A lot of manufacturers are including that as part of their kit. Um, 
and you're going to see that you can pick up like a 30 pack of these for like 20 bucks they're super cheap super lightweight um partly because if you can see they got that kind of a, that i frame design to them h frame design this one has that same thing that's going to reduce your weight um this is the carabiner that i've been using here for the last little bit on my lineman's belt just because it's just easier to manipulate sometimes when you're climbing you're going to be manipulating that lineman's belt several times as you're climbing the tree you know you might have to unhook it and rehook it and that just makes sure that you're never tempted to just hook it and then say eh well that'll be fine i'm not gonna really close the gate the reason you want to close the gate aside from just weakening um that carabiner you can see you can clip that right and it stays clipped and then we just unclip it clip unclipped so if something happens in that rope what, what that's doing is it's getting twisted that's fairly easy to happen in the cold in the dark you're climbing you got a bunch of layers on you're fiddling with stuff you know trying to get your lineman's belt around a limb or trying to get a piece of gear get a saw out of a pouch or something you're clipped boom you're unclipped you see an auto locker when it clips it's not coming off okay the third type of carabiner we're going to talk about is something I've already covered in another video, but it's a cool enough beaner that I just want to highlight it again. So you can see this is a Gribble plume. This is compared to the auto locker right here. You can see these are all very small, light carabiners. Let me get you a positron in there just for some more comparison. Ain't that pretty? Um, but this one you'll see has, in addition to the standard you know, that is usually the piece that would move on a wire gate. And that's no good because it can come undone just like I just demonstrated this one did, right? A wire gate does not lock. But you have that second gate. And what that means is you can very easily, you know, kind of manipulate that open. Okay? You can clip that. But that addition of a second gate means that it's keeping that carabiner it's keeping that loop off of that gate which would open right so if it managed to get up in there somehow then you could theoretically you can unhook it but that keeps it from happening um this carabiner is back to being ready for 25 on the main axis eight on the side axis and seven on lock so you can see all good reputable climbing carabiners they're going to be very similar don't buy your carabiners at you know a hardware store don't buy them off of alibaba or ebay or, or anything like that buy new carabiners they should come with the instructions from the manufacturer they're going to have this big booklet or this big fold out instruction sheet with all of these warnings and all these disclaimers because what they're selling these carabiners to people to do is very dangerous stuff um and you want that you don't you know want secondhand carabiners you want to regularly inspect them make sure they're not cracked and chipped and stuff like that um i have bought carabiners off of people secondhand that's really not best practices really a carabiner is an important enough piece of gear that very small light piece of aluminum is you know keeping your butt from hitting the ground two miles back down a, a dirt road somewhere where you don't have phone service so pony up the money buy a new carabiner use it properly don't side load it don't try load it straight line in line with that longest piece right there is how it is correctly loaded you don't want to sit there and have it hanging snagged on the edge of your lineman's belt or something like that you want to lock in carabiner something like these we'll have links to all three of them in the bottom of the video these are all great designs this i like because it's the lightest um Man, this is a stupid light little carabiner it is a little fiddly if your hands get cold manipulating that double gate these are great these are a solid workhorse they're very simple they're very safe they're not going anywhere they lock they do take a little bit of time to lock and unlock but that mechanism right there is not prone to malfunction a twist lock i didn't mention this but these can uh, if they get dirty or if they get icy they can freeze up here in alabama may shock you but it's not really a risk down here. It's non-existent. I think I've hunted in the snow like twice in my life. And even then it wasn't cold enough that my stuff froze up. So anyway, that is three reputable carabiners with three different locking mechanisms from three different companies. Um, and that is my little spill, the little bit I know about carabiners. 
hope that it taught you something. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll be doing some more videos in the future. Y'all take it easy.